So today's story takes us back to 1848 here in a little place known as Tong and it's in Brightnet. And it's about the story of Joseph Schofield who was 49 years of old when, sadly, he was murdered. Or was he? Now, the reason why I say was he, I asked the question once, eh, is on the morning when his broken body was found, and bearing in mind Joseph was still alive at this point, he had been attacked by two men on a bridge known as Tootle Bridge, which is just in this direction. We'll try and get there shortly. Uh, but I do believe that where his body was found is now private land, it's farmland, so we've got to be careful we can't trespass. If we can't get onto it, I'll try and get the bridge from the opposite side. But yeah, when his body was found, he was in a sad state. Now, it was basically approached by two guys who wanted his money. Now, it was much for worth a drink. He'd been in their announced pub, which is just in front of me. We're going to go to shortly. But um, when he was found, he was, like I said, he was in a broken state. Couldn't move, he was in a lot of pain. And apparently he'd been lying on his own with his feet in the water for around three hours, just over three hours. And it was a friend of his who had known him for pretty much all his life who found him. A man by the name of Robert Barlow. Now he heard groaning noises and obviously at the time he, he couldn't really make out where they were coming from. So he went back to where he came from, which was a company called Messrs Hollins and Co, where his father worked. So Robert and his father came back and they eventually found Robert, uh, sorry, they, they eventually found Joseph, I should say, lying half in the stream, half out. Uh, he was in a lot of pain. Now we'll go all into the story of what happened with Joseph the choices, he had two choices to make on the morning of his attack. Both horrific choices, I will say that, but he had one of two choices. And we'll go into that in detail a little bit more shortly. What I do need to say is though, this will be a very short video. It won't be like the previous ones. Some of these videos will be short. These are just spur of the moment, out and about videos uh, to accompany the podcast stories that we do. And there'll be more in the podcast, which I'll leave a link down below about this story. But as for the video, the locations, we can't really get to a lot of it. Like I said, some of it's on private property. So it will be a short video. This will bear that in mind. I'll just quickly go over the, the, the actual basics of this story for you. And if you want to listen to more as a podcast and read more about it, Visit the link down below, like I said, and I'll take you to the website about this and other stories that we've covered. So the story of Joseph Schofield took place here in Brightmet, in a place which at the time was very quiet. Uh, it's an area, I think it's called Tong or Tong Fold. And just over in the distance is a bridge called Tootil Bridge. And it was there on, well, it was Saturday evening at the time, on the 30th of September, 1848, when he encountered two strangers who demanded money off him. He, they told him to empty his pockets. Now, he refused to do so, and they both picked him up. And from all accounts, they obviously beat him up as well. Now, they threatened to throw him over the bridge, which was a 39 foot drop. But he pleaded for his life, because he knew obviously if they threw him, he weren't going to uh, get back out again. You know, he weren't going to get up alive again. So yeah, so he's actually begged for his life and he's asked them, look, if you're going to throw me over, give me a choice, give me a chance. Let me dangle over and I'll drop myself down. Now obviously, shocked by this request, they did it. Whether or not it was in hindsight, you know, nobody really knows. But uh, they might have thought, well, if he drops himself, it's not murder, is it? If he does die, I don't know. But uh, yeah, so they've let him dangle. But then one of them has hit him on his hand, on his knuckles. So obviously he's had to let go and he's falling down 
into the depths below. And like I said, when you think about it, it's a 39 foot drop. It's a hell of a drop, is that? And uh, it was lying there from anywhere between two and five o'clock when he was found by a guy called Robert. Now, Robert knew him well, they'd known him for a long time. Uh, so obviously, you know, he went for help, did Robert. He went and found his father, who worked over in this direction at uh, Messrs. Hollins & Co. It was an old mill. It was only a couple of minutes walk away. So anyway, he came back with his father. This son is in some severe stress, is uh, Joseph. You know, he's got, uh, obviously, bad injuries to his legs, probably to his back. They didn't know at the time, obviously. But yeah, so they've taken him back to uh, where Robert's father worked. And Robert's father's then gone for help. A guy called Thomas has turned up with a wheelbarrow. They've filled it with old rags. And then what they've done, they've um, taken Joseph back to the mill. Now, obviously, back at the mill, like I said, they've looked after him, they've put the rags in the wheelbarrow. They've got him a bit more comfier. They've taken Joseph then back home to a place called Under Shore. Now, Under Shore is in that direction. And it's just where young, uh, well, not young, but old Joseph was thrown from the bridge, literally within yards of his house. That's how close he was to being home on the day he got attacked. Uh, again, it's another sad story. Now, we've been over to the bridge itself, and I'll show you some footage now, but uh, unfortunately, we can't actually get to where Joseph once lived, simply because it's a private residence now, it's a farm and obviously we don't trespass, we just won't do it. Um, but I'll try and find some photos online to show you guys just what it did look like, uh, the far, you know, the place. But uh, yeah, unfortunately we can't actually get to it, but I have got some footage of the bridge itself. Uh, but yeah, it's a sad tale. But on the night in question, on the, uh, on the Saturday evening, Joseph has been over to Bolton, and what he'd done, he made his way back home, so under the shore, which is in that direction, like I say, and he'd been up to the Harry Nouns pub, which is just over here. We'll go to shortly. Now, it was there for a couple of hours from about 10, 10.30 onwards, just till just before midnight. And he left the pub. I won't say worse for wear for drink, but he'd left the pub. And John Greenhouse, um, he put Robert onto the main road and said, look, your house is just down there. You're safe. It's, it's dark, but you're safe. There's nobody here that can hurt you. Don't worry about it. Because obviously, Joseph must have been a bit apprehensive about walking on drunk on his own. So, obviously, he's walked down Bridge Road in this direction. And from all accounts, he actually got home. He actually made it home because some neighbours at the time recall seeing Joseph walk past the house. And one guy in particular, one of the witnesses, and he, he was a jury member as well at the inquest, he basically turned around to his son and said, look, shut the curtains, don't let Joseph know we're in. Because if he knows we're in, we, we can't get rid of him. We just can't get rid of him. So they, um, they shut the curtains and obviously Joseph went on his way. So they did hear him probably making his way home um, because, like I said, these were neighbours of, of Joseph's. So he's made his way home, but for some reasons, he's left his house again just before two o'clock. And this is why we know he was attacked after two because obviously he was found at five. It was seen before two o'clock. So we know, we've got a rough estimate roughly when he was attacked. Um, but apparently from all accounts as well, he was a, he was a nice fella, he was a widower. It was one of 22 children from the family, and his wife, who had died a few years before, um, obviously when she died, you know, he became this widower and he, he, he built his own house. He actually built his own house just past the bridge, like I said, where he was attacked. Uh, but uh, he, he lived there with his sister, Mary Davis, and together they had a quiet life, if you will. You know, they kept themselves themselves. Now, he liked his drink, don't be wrong. He did like his drink, and some people say he was, he was known for being drunk on many occasions. But, you know, he let life get the better of him, you know. He, 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 even though he was friendly, do jobs for people, uh, you know, he's a known gardener, he used to help out the locals in this area. He also has, he had a job working the cotton mill further up in this direction. Um, he was also being a bit of a nuisance when he was drunk, like people couldn't get rid of him. They just, you know, it was one of those, he was, so it wasn't like trouble as in violence, he just, you couldn't get rid of him. It was an annoyance more than anything. But other than that, he was a well-liked fella. Um, now his family and friends, some of his close friends, did distance themselves from him because of his temperament when he had a few drinks. So it was his close relatives who pretty much disowned him, other than his sister.
So, once he'd been taken back home and his sister was attending to his injuries, um, along with Thomas and his father, uh, and Robert, and his, I should say, and his father, they give him warm water bottles to try and subdue the pain. Now, Joseph sadly passed away around about 12, 15 that afternoon. Now, for some unknown reason, nobody went to get help at the time, and it was only after he passed away that a doctor um, had arrived, but it was too late to do anything. Now, obviously, the doctor got there, he passed away, couldn't do much. You have to ask the question, well, why wasn't people, you know, like the police or the doctor informed way before as soon as they found him? Obviously, we, we can't answer that question, nobody knows. But the thing is, Joseph gave a detailed account as to what happened in the early hours of that morning. You know, he told out these two ruffians, if you will, one guy being tall, the other being short. And what they did, they threatened him, they wanted money off him, he refused to give it, and what they were going to do to him. He gave pretty much a detailed account of it all. Now, the only thing he didn't do was give a description. He said it was too dark and he wouldn't recognise uh, them if he ever saw him again. And there was another witness that same night as well who came along and he was passing by and he was going over the bridge just prior to the attack on Joseph. And he even said that it was too dark, but he, do, he does recall, remember, seeing two guys, one tall, one short. Now, it sounds like it was the same people who attacked Joseph. But this was dismissed in court at the inquiry. Um, saying it was unreliable evidence and this, that, the other. So that was like lost over. But uh, yeah, they did the inquiry at the Air Nines pub. Strange enough, it took place there. Now, at the inquest and the inquiry, the judge ruled that obviously there was insufficient evidence to charge anybody with it. And obviously, Joseph's story could have been one of make believe, you know, because he tried to basically take a shortcut to get home. Now, some think he might have tried to climb over the battlements of the actual bridge itself, and he hung on to drop himself down. There wasn't anybody else involved. I think that's a highly unlikely scenario because it was so detailed with his account. And like I said, you know, this same situation took place six to eight months prior with another guy called Robert Greenall. She was attacked. Now he survived, but he ended up with a broken jaw. Same story, two guys threatened him, wanted his money, threw him off the embattlement, off the bridge. So, you know, it, chances are it was it was the same people who, uh, who attacked Joseph. Sounds highly reasonable, highly likely. But yeah, the judge ruled it as insufficient evidence to, uh, to do much else. So yeah, basically, it was killed, would you say? Was he killed? Um, because he, he actually said he dropped himself off the bridge. But anyway, these two guys pretty much got away with it. Now, it's a sad tale, like I said, it, they always are these stories, but this is probably the saddest at lot because he had two choices that morning. Be thrown over and possibly land on his head or let himself down with the hope of surviving just obviously with some injuries. But either way, it was still, you know, it was still a sad, sad tale. So in front of me, you can see the cream coloured building. That used to be the old Hare and Hounds pub in which Joseph visited quite regular and this is Bury Road coming down all the way down here so all this is Bury Road well that is the Aaron Hines pub proprietor was John Greenall she was a friend of Joseph now on that morning they came out of the pub and they went to Midlet Road and obviously that is when Joseph sadly met his, uh, his demise on his way home that, that night and he made his way down Bury Road Two Tool Bridge is just on the corner just there where the cars are that is Two Tool Bridge uh, but yeah, we just thought we'd show you where the Heronhouse pub used to be. I don't know what it is now, it just says the Jaden House. But it could mean anything. Um, I'll have to look into that. But just thought I'd show you guys where he once uh, frequented. I'm not sure if you can make that out, but you see the old marker which says Tootle Bridge. Built in 1904. And the wall itself is roughly four, five feet high. And this is the wall where Joseph was thrown over or dangled over when he died that morning. Now we're at the opposite side on Tootle Bridge. And as you can see from here, that's a fur drop. 
but where Joseph went over that day was on the opposite side which was just on that side and that is the five foot high wall roughly four or five foot tall and that is where Joseph was uh, dragged to and he had two choices to make that day uh, the jump probably thrown over now where we're seeing now this is seven acres and it's roughly an eight mile country walk and you can just see through the gates here again just how high he fell that uh, that morning roughly 39 feet but uh, if you like this guys if you like this one uh, please comment subscribe click the little notification bell down below because there's always stories coming some are going to be a lot longer than this one this is just a quick one like i said but if you do like these like i said do the old usual down below but in the meantime guys take care and look after yourselves